Hey, what's going on? So, late to the party again, but today I am going to give you a rundown of all the editing programs through the new MacBook Pro. I've got the 16 inch right now with the 32 gig, uh, not the Mac, so this is the Pro version, uh, but I will be running a comparison video in depth of each of the programs, but right now, today, for this episode, it's more of a overview. So today, we're looking at all the different codecs from Sony cameras. Uh, we've got the H.264, H.265, and that includes 4K, 8K. We've got Canon R5 footage from the 8K RAW. We've also got RED 4K footage, ProRes, as well as DaVinci's B-Roll uh, as well. So a lot of codecs, I'm gonna run through all of them through these different programs, and then I'm gonna render them out to see how far they go. Uh, and then upcoming episodes, I will be running in-depth. So for example, DaVinci, I'm gonna run through all the denoiser, the LUTs, uh, different layers and fusion. And so basically a dedicated video in each of these programs. So if you like those comments, do subscribe. And if this video hits a thousand likes, I will be buying another 14 inch MacBook Pro, the 16 gig version, just to do a comparison. And I also will be running a comparison of the 2020 M1 Max in the upcoming episodes. So a lot of content, a lot to get through. So let's get onto it. So starting off with the Final Cut Pro, as expected, this should be the best performer given that it's an Apple program. Uh, open it up, we start with the Sony cameras, right? We've got the old I format which is H264 with the least compression so I don't expect a lot of lag from this uh, program but let's have a look we can see the program just opens like that right it's super fast all programs I run through my external hard drive I've tested the speed up to 700 megabytes a second so I don't think it's going to compromise any of the footage playback okay starting off with Sony's footage all I format uh, H264 this one is at 25 FPS okay 422 footage 10 bit as you can see performance is great there is no compromise in dragging as well as playing back the footage likewise with the same format but 50 fps still no problems at all all timelines are in 4k as well with all the back end rendering turned off now a good way i like to test my computer performance through my editing software is the response time and that means the moment you press play how fast does it react and looking at the footage right now it is pretty snappy Okay, so now let's go to the H.264. This is the most format you'll see across the Sony cameras, the 7M3, the M4, the 7C. Uh, H.264, 10-bit, 4-2-2, right? This is not 8-bit, this is 10-bit. Um, and it's at 25 FPS. We'll test the high frame rate as well. Okay, you can see as I drag across the footage, we are seeing some stuttering compared to the previous Kodak. That's expected from the H.264. In terms of playback, response time is very good still, and there is no drop frame. So H.264, 10 bit, not a problem. Looking at the same Kodak at 50 FPS, still not a problem in terms of dragging and response time. So playback is smooth as well. Okay, so let's go to the next level, which is the H.265. This has the most compression, the smallest file size, while still maintaining video quality. This is probably the codec that we're looking for in the future. So let's see how well the computer handles that. This is 10-bit at 422, okay? So it's not 420, it's 422. Now keep in mind, this is 50 FPS, this is not 25. So we are actually decoding more frames per second. The playback is, is very smooth, right? Relatively, I think it's even better than the 264. Now let's stack them up to see how well they perform. Because in real life tests, who would only have one layer of footage, right? I've layered four of these clips together now to make it even harder I've turned on the opacity to around 60% and I've separated each of the frames so that we can actually see the different playbacks of the clips wow the performance is great there's no drop frame as you can see and it's playing back pretty pretty smooth right okay let's try eight layers and see how it goes oh we've got a stutter as you can see I think we're on the sixth layer where we are seeing a slowdown in the playback performance. Let me just remove a couple of layers and see how well he plays that. Okay, it looks like it's able to play back. So I think around five to six layers of clip is what we're limiting our computer to do. Okay, let's look at a Sony AK footage, right? So this is H264 uh, 420. So it looks like it's totally able to render and play back the footage. The decoder is doing a great job and it's able to drag back, not a problem at 8K. So that's good news, right? Uh, but in future, I will be testing extra layers. So next one, we've got the Canon R5. This is the 8K uh, footage from the R5. I'm not sure if you can tell, given that the video does not have that much movement, but the cloud is moving and it's very smooth. Uh, so from my screen, I can promise you, we've got the AK Canon and it's playing back pretty smooth, right? Moving on, we've got the ProRes 422. I don't assume this will have any problems, but let's just quickly have a look. 
no problem as well. Next is the red footage. This is a 4K red footage. Compression is at 7 to 1. So let's have a look. It's a raw footage. Okay, looks like there is no problem with that as well, B raw. Now let's render this out. The whole sequence is around just under six minutes. So this is a 4K footage rendering now. Uh, now let's look at the overall performance or the CPU and the memory usage. Now, unfortunately this is in Chinese. I'm using Clean My Mac and you can see, but let me just read it out to you. Uh, usable memory left, 8.2 gigabytes, right? So of the 32, we still got about eight gigs left that I can use. CPU is around 16%. So not much of usage right now. So that brings the question, will a 16 gigabyte Mac Group Pro be able to handle the same tasks? Well, if this video has a thousand likes, I will be buying one to compare it with you. Now, throughout the render, I'm not using any power supply, so unplugged, and there is no sound from the fan, so that's good to know. And here we go, the time we finished the six minute video in two minutes and 58 seconds. All right, let's go to DaVinci and see what it does in the same test. Okay, first up, we have B-Raw, so Blackmagic Raw in 6K footage. So previewing the video as well as playback is absolutely smooth, 25 FPS you can see at the very top. Uh, keep in mind, proxy has been turned off and there is no cache. Okay, so the next one is a Canon R5 8K footage. I had some problems in the previous uh, M1, so last year's M1 with a bit of stuttering, so let's have a look. Uh, but do keep in mind, I am running DaVinci 17.4, so that has been optimized for the latest M1, so we are seeing improvements, so let's have a look. Uh, wow, there you go, smooth playback, 25 FPS, 8K, Canon RAW, easy, right? Let's go to the next one. Okay, ProRes 422. Not a problem, uh, you shouldn't be able to have a problem playing this back on, on DaVinci either. And it seems like it's running perfectly fine. And let's look at red 4K footage, compression 7 to 1. The 4K timeline, 25 FPS, not a problem. So let's look at the Sony codex, right? Starting off with the Sony H264, 25 FPS. No problems. Let's look at the 50 FPS. Preview looks fine and the playback speed is at 25 FPS, so no drop frames. It's time for a challenge. Okay, so H265 now, 10 bit, 422. Let's see how it does, 50 FPS. Looks pretty good, right? Playback is smooth, response time is good as well, 25 FPS, no drop frames. And finally, we have the Sony OI, not expecting any problems. It runs super smooth, um, the least compressed codec, so uh, no problems here. Finally, we've got the Sony 8K footage. Okay, it's stuttering, right? And I think it's having more stutter compared to Final Cut Pro. It's not performing as well. Now let's see playback. So playback is good, but I think just through the Dragon previews, we are seeing less frames or more stuttering compared to Final Cut Pro. Now in Final Cut Pro, I did test H.265 in different multiple layers. So let's do the same test here in DaVinci. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight layers. At the same time, we're gonna turn all the opacity down to around 50% so it all shines through. Okay, it looks like we had a little bit stuttering as we were approaching around the fifth to the sixth layer. I think that's the limit right now, similar to Final Cut Pro, around the fifth and sixth layer. So that's something to keep in mind, right? Let's remove a couple layers, leave it to about five and see playback. Okay, now DaVinci is showing 25% smooth, no drop frames, but from my viewing experience, it looks like there is a little bit of stuttering, so it's not smooth. Uh, so I think five layers is probably the limit for DaVinci in a H.265, uh, you know, normal footage playback. Let's render this out, the same six minute clip. Now in terms of the performance, as we're rendering, there is no fan, uh, I'm still unplugged. But if we look at the memory, now before we had around 24 gigs that's available of the 32, now it looks like we only have two to three gigs that's free, so DaVinci is obviously using a lot more memory. CPU is around the same, around 15 to 16%. Um, so let's see how long it takes. Okay, and we've finished. It looks like three minutes and 16. Not as fast as Final Cut Pro, uh, which is kind of, I expected that, but I think the margin is not as big, right? Okay, so now let's go to PR. Of course, this is a 4K timeline as well. We're playing back in full resolution, okay? So let's see. We're starting off with the Sony OI footage, so don't expect a lot of problems here. 
Okay, it looks like dragging and playback is super smooth on the OI format, H.264. So let's go to the one we're most concerned about is the H.265. So 10 bit, 4 to 2, 50 FPS. Okay, so dragging seems to be okay. There is a little bit of stuttering, but I think it's acceptable. Let's see playback. Okay, did you see that? There is a response delay. So the moment I press play, we're waiting around just under a second before the playback starts. That's not expected. Adobe, I know Adobe is still not optimized for M1, uh, but as you can see, we are seeing a second of delay in response time. In terms of playback, we're not dropping any frame. It's still green, so no drop frames here. Okay, now H.264, 10 bit. 4 to 2, let's have a look. This is 25 FPS. So H.264, both 25 and 50 FPS, seems to be playback fairly smooth. There's really no drop frames and dragging preview looks fine. Let's check out the AK Sony footage. It's taking a bit of time before the preview displays on screen. So I think it's taking a bit of time to process. Now this is AK, so let me minimize this, but we can see there is a little bit of delay in playback as well in terms of response time. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we are losing frame. You can see it's got the yellow dot and we're seeing 13 drop frames. I think this happens at the very start of the playing process. As we go through the footage, I think we're fairly stable. So very at the beginning, I think we're losing that frame. Let's check out the red footage as well in 4K. Okay, it looks like we are losing frames as well at the very start. I think it's showing 24 frames. I was lost at the very start. Let's check out the drag speed. Seems to be fairly smooth. I'm not sure, are we actually losing frame? Let's play back again. Yeah, we are losing frames, so we dropped another 14 frames somewhere, I think at the very start as well, very similar to the previous clip. And finally we have ProRes, now we can see ProRes is going to run perfectly fine. Finally, it's the Canon R5 8K footage. Okay, we're losing frames, right? We've got 9 frames, 50 frames, 132 frames, 156 frames, 219 frames. So we're losing frames throughout the video, right? So this is the most difficult clip to play out of all of these. PR is still not optimized as well, and it's really causing a slowdown in terms of playback. So unfortunately, if you're a PR user, hmm. Anyways, let's render this out and see how long it takes. Oh my God, sorry. We just got a crash right now. We've got a crash, so let's restart and do it again. The final car finish in two minutes and 56 seconds. Da Vinci, we're at three minutes and 16 seconds. PR, we finished at seven minutes and eight seconds. So longer than the footage itself, right? So this is the least optimized, more than double the previous two programs. So unfortunately, I think this year, if I were to recommend, I mean, last year I said, if you're a Final Cut user, definitely go for the M1 this year. I'm gonna stand put. M1 users, if you're using Final Cut, if you're using DaVinci this year, go for it. I think this is a great choice. If you're using Premiere Pro, you're gonna still experience some delay and lags and, and optimization here. It's, it's not 100% there, right? So this is something to keep in mind. Okay, so stay tuned if you wanna see the full in-depth review of DaVinci on this laptop as well as Adobe Suite. So we've got Photoshop, Lightroom, we've got PR and AE. Stay tuned, right? Subscribe and of course, thank you for staying to the end. Uh, if you can, like this video so you can share it with the people who actually is looking to buy one of these laptops. Hopefully that will help them and maybe save them a couple of thousand dollars if you're a PR user. Um, but yeah, I'm George. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.